Hey, what's going on? It's Instructor Mike. All right, really quickly. I've been commonly asked a question, okay, or I've been asked a common question. Why is it when I shoot with one hand, and I'm ambidextrous, my primary hand is my right hand, but my you know, other hand that I can use is my left hand as well. So I get asked the question, when I shoot with one hand, why do I turn my hand inward at a 45 degree angle regardless of which hand I use? Well, it's about dexterity and it's about stability, okay? Dexterity is the ability to be able to manipulate your fingers and understanding the science of that, okay? But stability in dealing with a firearm, you have to deal with the recoil, okay? The rearward recoil of this firearm. And in that, the reason why I turn my hands inward, if you close your eyes, and do your hands just like this and then you cut off all noise and you concentrate and turn your hands slowly inward you will begin to feel your pectoral muscles tighten up if you've ever had someone to teach you boxing or teach you striking with your fist you've got that straight punch but you've got that power punch your power punch comes when you turn your hands inward towards your center axis it gives you more muscular stability because you lose skeletal stability and in some ways a percentage of your muscular stability the more you begin to project your hand forward i don't care how strong you are if you hold this firearm and you present it all the way out the closer this firearm is to you you have more stability in terms of retaining the firearm when you learn weapons retention and disarming you have more ability to be able to retain this firearm because you have the supports of your muscular structure and your skeletal structure the minute you begin to project this firearm outward you begin to lose that muscular structure and stability and you begin to lose a percentage of your skeletal stability that you have because you're only relying on the strength of your arms and the strength of your bones and no matter how tight you hold this firearm no matter how much you lift, I could still move that firearm, okay? So when we're talking about one-hand shooting, sure, you can shoot like this if you want to, but you have more stability in holding this firearm, at least I believe, okay? You have more stability in holding this firearm. When you project that firearm out or just like this, turning it at about a 45 degree angle. Now, some would ask the question, why not 90? Well, the only way that I really suggest using a 90 degree turn is if I'm dealing with a close quarter situation and I have someone up on me, okay, and they are presenting, let's just say maybe I turn the corner, I have the firearm in my hand, or maybe I don't, but hopefully I do, I have the firearm in my hand and this person jumps out at me and I have to hurry up and deflect or block any upward attack or maybe give a distraction which would buy me time to then simultaneously turn that firearm at a 90 degree angle like how you see, thus giving my slide the clearance to be able to move rearward when I discharge it so that it can eject the casing and insert a new round. That is the only way that I would typically turn my firearm to a 90 degree angle, pop, 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 pop and then get that person off of me if those rounds inserted into them were effective. And that's the caveat, okay? If not, I keep going, maybe I'll move with that firearm like so, okay? Sometimes people get caught into one theory, always thinking that the firearm has to be upward. No, it can be turned 45 degrees, it could be turned 90 degrees, depending upon your tactics, okay? Gunfighting up close is in fact a fight. Okay, so don't get caught into the concept of having to just hold this firearm just like this. This is cool for the range. Okay, this is cool for the range. But there are some times where you may have to grab a deadly threat, pop, 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 and then maybe move on to the next threat if this threat is totally down. Okay, again, this is Instructor Mike and you've been trained. Follow me on Facebook at Mike Brown Instructor Mike. Follow me on Instagram at Yes Mike Said It. Subscribe to my YouTube page, Instructor Mike. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell for notifications. Again, if you try any of these tactics, I would suggest with the tactics, with just your body, use an inert firearm just like this. Or if you do have your live firearm with you, make sure that you have no ammunition in the area. Make sure you follow the three basic firearm safety rules. Remove, every, remove strike that. Assume every firearm is loaded. Point that firearm in a safe direction. Keep your finger off of the trigger. No magazine in the well. Okay, no round in the chamber. Okay, make sure that there are no live rounds in the area. I would suggest rack it three times. Okay, to make sure nothing's in there, point it in a safe direction, press that trigger. Okay, and if you have a Glock with the firearm just like this, the hammer has fallen. The only way it's going to fire is if there's a round or there's a magazine inserted. 
and if the slide is racked, just like so, okay? This is Instructor Mike. Again, you've been trained. You all be safe. Oh, and get your butt in somebody's concealed carry class. Again, it's no one's job to protect you, but you.